Hey everyone, and welcome to Belgrade. This is the last stop on an adventure that began in Uzbekistan and saw me fly through parts of Central Asia and Europe aboard some pretty unique airlines. I'm really glad that I chose to end this little adventure in Belgrade. It's a beautiful city, and I spent two great days seeing the sights and relaxing after all of the flying that I had just done, even though it was a little cold and rainy at this time of year. But now it's time to head back to the airport and catch a flight to the US with the nation's flag carrier, Air Serbia. Belgrade Airport is named after the famous inventor Nikola Tesla and is Air Serbia's hub. As a US citizen, check-in was fairly straightforward for me, but I did see quite a few people being turned away because they didn't have their vaccine history on them. This was filmed back in December when it was still necessary for non-US citizens to show proof of vaccination before boarding any flight to the US. I'm not sure if this rule is still in effect, but if you're traveling soon, make sure to do your research. This airport is in the midst of a huge modernization project, and from what I've seen, it's coming out really well. Although I did have some trouble finding the lounge with all the work going on. I'm flying economy today, but for an extra $20.60 at checkout, I was able to buy a pass to get inside. The lounge was small, but nice. There was a buffet where you could grab some hot and cold food, and a bar where you could also order some complimentary drinks. It wasn't the best lounge I've ever been to, but I was happy with the cappuccino and food I was able to get before my flight. Boarding began while I was still eating, and by the time I got to the gate, the line to pass through the enhanced security was pretty long. But after a very thorough pat-down, I made it through and sat around for a bit before they let us on the plane. Air Serbia currently has two A330-200s in their fleet. There's this one which sports Mihilo Pupin on its tail, and the one I'll be flying on today which has a Nikola Tesla livery. For a while this route to New York was Air Serbia's only long haul service, but business has been booming lately for the Serbian flag carrier, and they've started additional flights to Chicago and Tianjin. A few days before I took this trip, one of my favorite YouTubers, Noel Phillips, released his review of Air Serbia's transatlantic service, but in business class. And although he was flying in the premium cabin, he witnessed some pretty lousy service for the economy passengers. So I was a little nervous as I waited to board. Air Serbia took over this plane from Aeroflot in 2021, and it looks like they made some cosmetic changes to the economy cabin. I paid $45 to sit and seat 23 k for this flight. I was hoping that if I paid for one of the more expensive seats up front, then maybe I'd have an open seat next to me, but that didn't work out. This seat still felt pretty roomy though, even with someone next to me. There was a generous amount of legroom, a nice seat back pocket, and the tray table was pretty large. I was also able to fit one of my bags into the overhead bin without any issues. Thankfully, Air Serbia provided a blanket and a pillow for everyone in economy. During the flight, you may expect sky clear occasional light more than turbulence. Outside temperature of the minus 65. At this moment, weather in New York is partly cloudy. With a southeast wind about 3 meters per second and outside temperature at this moment is 1 degree. Once again, thank you for attention and on the flight. We pushed back from the gate on time and had a short taxi to the runway. Now that we're up in the air, let's take a closer look around. While Air Serbia may have updated the upholstery on the seats, the hardware is definitely left over from this plane's days at Aeroflot. The IFE screen is small but adjustable. There's no universal outlet, but you can use the USB port to charge your phone or tablet. And there's this remote for the IFE system. There's reading lights, but no overhead air vents. And the cabin did get a little warm at times during this flight. Once we reached cruising altitude, the flight attendants handed out these earbuds and a menu. 
It took the crew a while to serve the first meal, so I glanced through the in-flight magazine, which was full of articles about how the airline is expanding. It looks like Air Serbia might start flying a third wide body pretty soon, and they might add even more long haul destinations to their network like Toronto. They served breakfast on this flight, and I went with the Gibanitsa. It was served with some bread and a bowl of fruit. Personally, I really didn't enjoy it, but that didn't have anything to do with the preparation or food quality or anything like that. I'm just not a fan of this type of meat. After breakfast was cleared away, I took a look at the options available on the IFE system. The touchscreen wasn't very responsive, so I was forced to use the remote, and I still found there to be a bit of a lag. The selection of movies and TV shows wasn't that great, which doesn't surprise me considering that Air Serbia only has a handful of long haul routes. In the end, I just kept it on the moving map and watched some stuff I had downloaded on my tablet. As we made our way towards North America, the window shades were closed and the cabin lights were turned off. I found the seat to be well suited for this 10 hour flight. The headrest was adjustable and there was a nice amount of recline. The crew was also very good about serving water. I actually asked the flight attendants for some extra on a few occasions and they were happy to oblige. At this point in the journey, I hadn't experienced any of the unpleasantries from the crew that Noel witnessed on his flight. On the contrary, I actually found them to be very nice. As we cruised below Iceland, the crew handed out some snacks and drinks. Getting this bag of chips was a nice touch, and I also enjoyed the apple juice. After that was cleared away, I decided to go visit one of the lavatories. There were plenty of bathrooms in the economy cabin, and I saw the crew freshening them up throughout the flight. As we crossed over Canada, the cabin lights were turned back on, and the crew handed out some sandwiches. They had the same type of meat that I was complaining about before, so I wasn't a fan but I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that would have enjoyed it. As we got closer to New York, we ran into a lot of turbulence, so everyone needed to stay put and buckle their seat belts. Ladies and gentlemen, we are entering the zone of the turbulence, and please remain seated with your seat belts fastened. Thank you. We made it through eventually though, and got ready to land. This was a fun way for me to get back to New York. Air Serbia's long haul service might not be as polished as some of the larger airlines, but I still think they did a really nice job overall. And most importantly, I didn't run into any of the issues that Noel observed when he flew on this plane before me. In fact, I thought the crew were great throughout this entire flight. In total, this ticket cost me $523 which I found to be well worth it to get the chance to spend some time in Belgrade and fly long haul on such a unique airline. Have you ever flown with Air Serbia before? If so, let me know what you think of them in the comments below. Anyway, that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.